maidly that was hard work. Say hi to Jill Dando for me. Hello there. A mixture of loving tribute and sheer dustful passion for the show itself has driven the mighty Christopheles and myself, Glenny Boy, to the point of making our own episode of Glorious Vids. Now, in the seven or so years since Vids has gone off the air, I've been sweating like a junkie without a fix. Forget your MySpace, YouTube and Facebook. I need the raw opinionization, the underground graveyard slop, zeal and vigour of Nigel and Steph. But since as I can't personally restart 4 later, the bastards at Channel 4 won't return my phone calls and I know where the director lives. Oh yeah. I've come here, with Glenny Boy, to bask in the glory of Shrewsbury and cast our own vanity-driven, late-twenties, post-internet warped minds over some of the recent DVD releases. First up, Day of the Dead. When a virus breaks out in a small Midwest American town, the army heads in to quarantine the place. But this isn't just a mutated flu bug, and when the infected townsfolk start turning into zombies, they quickly begin to munch on the local population who try to escape. Caught in the crossfire, local soldier Mira Sabini and a handful of other survivors try and make it out alive. This is a remake of George Romero's 80s classic of the same name in the very loosest sense. Day of the Dead is a travesty of celluloid that shouldn't be confused with, or associated to, anything as quality as George Romero's zombie entries. I'm hearing some uh, zombie sound right now, actually, as a matter of fact. Boy, you got on the back door? Chrissy boy? This is one of those direct-to-video crud fests where every single thing is wrong with it. Acting, direction, effects, casting, editing, lighting, extras, production design, script, everything is catastrophically awful. Nothing works. Mira Savini wins miscasting of the decade as a tough as nail soldier as her tiny frame looks about seven stone. Bing Rames at least looks suitably embarrassed and gets himself killed off with a minimum of screen time, but even then he has to suffer the indignity of a rubbish zombie revival, shoddy glue on legs, stumps and all. The fact that these stars are involved seems to suggest that once upon a time this had the potential for some cinema release, which beggars belief given how the plot is a kind of post Resident Evil guff that wouldn't cut the mustard on an episode of Charmed. Where is he? Cast the airborne, but once in the blood it mutates faster than anything else. Dr. Logan, it's Corporal Cross. Thanks for coming. Can you give us a minute? Of course. I find people speak more freely without a superior officer around. I'll be outside. You've had quite a night. You could say that. About the bodies. You said they looked like they were mauled. Could it have been an animal attack? But if an animal can hide a body in a closet... The sun is missing? Yes. Did the wounds look like bite marks? What? It's a simple question. How would I know? It's right there, Glenny boy. It's right there. Right. When I get his attention with this, drag it down, bash it in the face, take it right in bond styling. Dando the bastard, right with that spade. Mummy? <laughs> All the zombies here have been tinkered with in post-production, giving them a silly-looking, sped-up quality, very Benny Hill, which gave me the impression I was watching the film in Fast Forward, which you'll soon wish was the case, believe me. Combine this with the quick, awful scatter-shot ending throughout, and you have a real endurance contest. One of Ramiro's masterstrokes in the original was the character of Bub the Zombie, that started to evolve, marvellously illustrating the human notion of choice by having him develop emotionally, and therefore less of a danger to the group. Here... Nothing. Bub doesn't eat people because he's a vegetarian. A vegetarian zombie? I feel shameful just saying it. And that sums up the film, doesn't it, really? It's the kind of sweating, streaming, hulking piece of shit that once witnessed will haunt you forever. Oh, oh my god. Why 
are we gonna do? I can imagine the producers somewhere in Hollywood land around a big sweaty table of cash laughing, <laughs> laughing because they'd had everything. Well, the joke's on you, you bastards. I streamed the film. <laughs> Where's my wallet? Dad? Okay, we, we really need a doctor. This takes the biscuit as being quite the most turgid viewing experience I've had in some time, and my plea to you, the viewer, is not to make our suffering in vain by experiencing it yourself. Make no mistake, this isn't so bad it's good. It's just tired, turgid, lazy filmmaking by committee, shamelessly trotted out to exploit anyone with an interest in the originals. Oh, and despite the presence of Bing Rames, this has no connection with the rather good Dawn of the Dead remake that came out a few years ago, which should help rule out any potential curiosity rentals. Day of the Dead is out to bite you from the bottom shelf of your nearest blockbuster now. Right, Clanny boy, let's bury this undead bitch along with fucking Mahatma Gandhi and John Lennon. Righto. <laughs> Next up, Salo, or the 120 Days of Sodom. Set in Italy during the final days of Mussolini's fascist regime, Salo is a story of four of the country's most powerful men, including the president, abusing their various stations. They marry each other's daughters to assure their continued lineage and abduct 18 of the most promising young adults from the land to a palace in the hills. Once there, they subject them to all manner of obscene torments ranging from rape, torture, and even shit-eating. Directed by Pierre Pablo Pasolini, who was killed shortly before its release in 1976, this is hard hitting stuff. Deboli creature incatenate, destinate al nostro piacere. Spero non vi siate illusi di trovare qui la ridicola libertà concessa dal mondo esterno. Siete fuori dai confini di ogni legalità. Nessuno sulla terra sa che voi siete qui. Per tutto quanto riguarda il mondo. Voi siete già morti, ed ecco le leggi che regoleranno qui dentro la vostra vita. Puntualmente alle sei, tutta la compagnia dovrà riunirsi nella sala detta delle orge. Dove? Certainly notorious, it's easy to see why Salo is still banned in several countries today, with the original withdrawn DVD supposedly fetching up to $1,000 on eBay before this recent re-release. It does have that video nasty feel in spades, despite being an altogether classier production with its beautiful locations, opulent sets, romantic music, and fancy sodomy poems. À l'ombre des jeunes filles en fleurs qui ne vont pas croire au malheur. Elles écoutent la radio, elles boivent du thé au degré zéro de la liberté. Elles ne savent pas que la bourgeoisie n'a jamais hésité même à tuer ses fils. 